Hello and welcome to Our Devotions. We're together, we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel, this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello, today we're gonna to be talking about the importance of not being isolated. So grab your Bible and get ready to jump right in with us. I think this is such a huge topic today. I think we live in the most individualistic society and time ever. Um, I think it's a problem all around the world, and I think it is an excessively large problem in the U.S. Yeah. Um, where we have this, like, I can do it, I can do this on my own. Um, so many people, I mean, it's, it's almost like if you picture olden days when they had, like, this castle with a drawbridge where they would come in and, like, pull the drawbridge to keep everybody away. Most people now have that. They come into their driveway, <laughs> they hit the remote, and the, the drawbridge opens, I mean the garage door, and they pull in and they shut it and no one else is allowed in. And it's yeah. this, like, hey, I've got my own little private kingdom here and we're going to turn to entertainment and instead of being connected. Yeah. And we can become so isolated. But Proverbs... Well, you can feel like you're not isolated because you're connected. You have a phone. <laughs> but you're like, even though I feel connected, you're not really with anyone. Yeah, and they, and they use that, that phone to spy on people <laughs> rather the, than be in connection and relationship to people. Right, yeah. And it's easy to look and to go, well, hey, I saw what they were doing this week via Facebook, via yeah. whatever social media app you're using, and therefore, I feel like I'm in relationship, but there's not actual relationship. And yeah. Proverbs 18.1 says, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire, and he breaks out against all sound judgment. And when I look and I go, okay, the person who's isolated does whatever they want. Yeah. And, and they're in a position and in a place where no one will challenge them. Mm. And in that spot, it's foolish and it rages against all sound judgment. And like when you, when you take it a little piece at a time, it can actually sound almost pleasant. You're like, yeah. oh, I can do whatever I want. But he goes through and he goes, no, no, no. This puts you in a spot where no one's going to call you out if you have a blind spot. The problem with a blind spot is you don't see it. Yeah. By definition, you don't know when you have blind spots. <laughs> right. And so it's easy to end up in these spots where we can start heading down a course, not recognizing what's going down it. And he goes, you need people in your life that are in your life enough to call you out. In your life enough to go. To encourage you, to uplift you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that, that's not the way you want to do it. I've done that. That doesn't work out well. Hey. And to encourage you and to go, hey, you can do this. I know yeah. that it's hard right now, but you're almost over the hump. You are almost there. It's going to get better. This yeah. is a stage. Every kid goes through it. Like yeah. whatever, the, <laughs> whatever the hump that you may be caught behind that you're trying to climb, you need people in there. Or it reminds me of being at the gym. Like you'll see guys at the gym and they can do so much on their own. But if you see somebody else walk up and be watching them, all of a sudden you see like they, they go push a little harder. They go, maybe they were only going to do 10 reps and now all of a sudden they're being watched. So they're going to do 20 reps. It helps you go further and to do harder things than you would be able to do on your own because that encouragement and that ability to be right next to someone just makes such a difference. It does. And, it, it, and you've got Hebrews 10, 25 there. Yeah. Uh, as this is kind of laid out for us in the word. Yeah, it says, not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction, as is the habit of son, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. It's so important to not stop meeting together. The church is so vital for community, for being with one another. Absolutely. I love that he, he brings it and he just makes it simple. Going, Don't stop. And we live in a, in a society where like, hey, but I can find teaching without going to a church. Yeah. I can find a lot of the elements of yeah. the service I can find without ever connecting. But he goes, you need people that will encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Yes. And it's easy to, to lose sight of it. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, our enemy, the devil, goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom we may devour. Yeah. If you ever watch a documentary on lions, you go, what, how, do they, how do they pick one to devour? They try to get one off of the herd. And the one that they get alone is the one that they eat. So many Christians are the one alone. We're sitting here going, well, hey, it's okay. I have my own thing. Yeah. And 
I'll just spend some time with God on my own. And we don't realize that it says, hey, do not forsake the gathering together. Yeah. You need people that will encourage you. You need people that will strengthen you. You need people that will call you out. Right. You need to, to have each other's backs. And there's so much power in that. And I have heard people sit, look at me and go, well, yeah, it's just me and God and that's okay. And I have a surprise for you. God says you're wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it can sound really sweet to be like, well, it's just me and Jesus and that's enough. But if you look in creation, you're going to look and you're going to find that God made things and he'd get done making something and he'd go, and it's good. And then he'd make something else and he'd go, it's good. And he'd make something else. And it's good. Yeah. And then he makes man and he looks at man and he goes, it's not good that man would be alone. Yeah. Do you realize that when God said that, God was already there? Yeah, <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's good. so in a garden, in a perfect setting, he looks at man and goes, you aren't meant to be alone. You yeah. are meant to do life in relationship. Right. And this is the way that you're wired. This is the way that you're designed. And so many of us are trying to operate contrary to that. Yeah. So this is your encouragement to be making friends, to show yourself friendly, to do what you can to be a friend to others. Sometimes it can be easy if we've been isolated for a while to um, get together and to just dump on somebody. Yep. <laughs> but, but making time to be kind to somebody else, to bring someone a meal, to just share a conversation where you're not just talking, but where you're listening, you know, having those back and forth, taking that time to develop a relationship and a friendship. Friendships don't happen overnight. There's something that has developed over time, so don't lose heart. Taking those steps in the right direction. Yeah, I think that's one of the most, one of the large glaring holes in this is so often we can get into a spot where either we think we're okay isolated and there's like ditch number one. Yep. And then we figure out that, hey, I've been in ditch number one and we go, hey, I just need a relationship. Yeah. And so we're often waiting for somebody else to be the friend. Yeah. Or as, as, to be rescued, so to speak. Yeah, so we're looking for this rescue. And I remember my sister in college, she, she moved 10,000 miles, so she didn't have any friends. And she's like, well, I, I'm sick of being friendly. I just want someone else to be my friend. I want yeah. someone to come. And it's like, it, it says that a man who has friends must show himself friendly. Proverbs 18, 24. Like, you're going to have to make some of the steps. And, and recognizing that, yeah. and recognizing, I love that you pointed out, a lot of times when people do that, or I guess one of the ditches when people do that yeah. is to look for some for a free counselor. Yeah. And, and or they, just you have so much to say. You want to just say it all right now. Like, here's all my things. Be my friend. Here's, here's my package of how I come. That yeah. was my own problem for a while when I was and, younger. And being so quick to try to, to dump and try to get them to be your friend rather than going, hey, how can I be their friend? How right. can I help them? How can I be there for them? How can I encourage and when we do that, it makes such a difference. But I want to yeah. encourage you with that. Let's get into our confessions today. All right, repeat these after me out loud, okay? I live generously. I live generously. Overflowing with God's love. Overflowing with God's love. In all I do. In all I do. I am filled with the grace and power of God. I am filled with the grace and power of God. I stand in prayer. I stand in prayer. To see God's will done. To see God's will done. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. I am quick to listen. I am quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. And slow to become angry. And slow to become angry. I encourage others and build them up. I encourage others and build them up. Whatever I speak or do. Whatever I speak or do. I do everything. I do everything. As unto the Lord Jesus. As unto the Lord Jesus. I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't have a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. But of power, love, and a sound mind. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. God, I thank you that your power does live in us. God, yes. that you have made us to be in relationship, relationship with you and relationship with others. God, I ask that your love would mark us and set yes. us apart. God, that you would help us to be surrounded by godly men and women that will encourage us and strengthen us in our walk with you. And God, I ask that you have your way in every part of our lives. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We hope that this encouraged you today. If you felt encouraged, would you please hit like, share, and subscribe. And as always, we want to invite you into the word for yourself to discover how much God has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.